girls, we thank the Lord that we have met again one more time this week. Welcome to the lesson and I hope all of you are fine. Today is a new day and we praise God, hey, for today. Before we start our lesson, there's a song called Praise the Name of Jesus. May we all rise up and enjoy the song and prepare to hear a very interesting story today. that Mantupaishi drew here at home. Look, it looks marvelous. Right? That angel, does it have wings? Matipa, you answer. That's your picture. Does it have wings? Yes. Okay. Does it shine? Yes. <laughs> That's very nice. Is it a female or a male? Only God knows. <laughs> That's wonderful, eh? Hey? So, angels, they come in different forms. From this picture, you can see it's got wings. It's wearing a robe-like. And it looks all right. It, that's like a crown. So, the Lord makes these angels in any form that he feels. But from the book of Matthew, this show, they are always shining. And they are glowing with this color, this shiny color. So the description about angels from the Bible says they are powerful servants of God. Number two, they are created by God. Number three, there are lots of them. We've got millions and billions of these angels here on earth and in heaven. Also, they are spirits and their job is to save humans. Boys and girls, we can start our lesson. You shall hear about an angel that visited someone. In this story that we are going to talk about, the birth of Jesus. Our main lesson begins as this. We are reading from Matthew chapter 1, from verse 18 to 25. Remember last week we talked about Matthew. Matthew starting to write his book about Jesus. He set the scene by telling all about people of long ago from Jesus' family, what we call the genealogy or the family tree of Jesus. Now today, he wants to start the story properly. And he is thinking, he's pondering that 
he has to start from the beginning, from where it started. So I'm going to read the summary from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25, is follows. This is how Jesus Christ was born. He carried on to say that a man called Joseph from King David's family was engaged to a young woman called Mary. Before they were married, Mary found out that she was going to have a baby. Jesus was a good man. Joseph was a good man, sorry. He knew it wasn't his baby and he wanted to do the right thing. He decided that there would not be a wedding. Joseph was still thinking about what to do when an angel came to him in a dream. Remember, we spoke about angels. The angel said that the baby Mary was going to have was from the Holy Spirit. Joseph should marry Mary, and when the baby was born, they were to call him Jesus. The baby was to be given this name because he would save people from their sins, and Jesus means the Lord saves. Then Matthew remembered the story from long ago. The prophet Isaiah had once written of a young woman who was going to have a baby. The baby would be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That was exactly what Jesus is. God is with us. Born here on earth, excitedly, Matthew wrote Isaiah's words on his scroll as well. It was another of God's promises about Jesus coming true. Then Matthew wrote about Joseph and Mary getting married. The baby was born and Joseph named him Jesus. Oh, thought Matthew, that's a very good start to my story of Jesus. And so Joseph accepted Jesus as his only son because he listened to the angel that the Lord had sent to speak to him. When we started, we said the angels are sent to save humans. We have lords, they are created by God and they are powerful servants. God is now speaking through his word. Long ago, he used to speak in prophets and prophecies. Like if we go through even last week's message, today we talking of these angels. So before we, we finish our lesson, we need to hear our memory verse from Auntie Taliwa. Boys and girls, this week's memory verse comes from Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2. It says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he also made the universe. So we can see God has given his message to the people through the prophets. Some whom had spoken about Jesus coming, coming. the writer of Hebrews is saying that, that this has happened now and God has sent his son as the best message of all. Just a question to ask you, why did God give the prophecies about Jesus' birth? so that people would look forward to his coming, so that people would get ready for his coming, so that people would know that Jesus is God's son, his gift to us and not to doubt him. Well done, Matipa. Those are great answers. In conclusion, boys and girls, God is sovereign. We must trust him. We must obey him. This whole summary of the story is trying to tell us that the birth of Jesus in his upbringing was not an accident, but it was part of God's plan. I'm sure all of us, we are God's plan. And because of that, we live for him. Let's adore him. Let's live right and continue to look back in our own life and see what he has done. I'm sure we've got stories. If we are to tell all our stories, there are lots of them. We need to praise God, to praise his name. May we bow our heads in prayer and thank him for his love. Dear God, help us when 
our ordered world is turned upside down by you to adjust our perspectives to fit in yours. May you be with us throughout the week and bless all the boys and girls. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye, boys and girls. Have a good week and have a good time at school and at home. Thank you.